Okay, so both animals and plants store energy in their body. And this is can be important specifically if there are periods of time where um, there is not energy readily available. So when we talk about animals, we generally talk about the storage of energy in fat. So fat is used to store energy. Fat is interesting because it repels water. And so what that means is, is that fat is an efficient way to store energy. So like tri, they're called triglycerides. You might've heard of that word. And triglycerides can be stored within cells that are called fat cells or adipocytes in adipose tissue. And those cells can expand when they gain fat and then they use up the fat when it is necessary and then they shrink back down. So if you've ever gained like 10 pounds, you might notice that you might get it around your belly, for example, and those fat cells are expanding because they are storing excess energy. When we um, talk about um, organisms and specifically endothermic organisms and actually ectothermic organisms as well, we can actually reduce the amount of energy that is necessary by slowing down the metabolic rate. So we can also talk about hibernation in some organisms where they will slow down their metabolic rate in order to conserve energy. And so specifically in temperate or cold climates, um, the mammals might hibernate in order to conserve energy. When we talk about plants, plants can store energy as not fats, but they can store it as starch. So starch is stored in the roots. So for example, carrots and potatoes are tubers and they store energy in their roots. And then we use that energy by digging up the potato or digging up the carrot and eating it, right? So um, an example of this would be pot a potato and the potatoes store energy in tubers, they call them. We could also talk about trees and how trees, deciduous trees lose their leaves and they store energy in their roots. And so if we talk about, for example, the maple tree, over the winter, it stores energy in its roots. And then during the springtime, that energy comes back out of the roots and moves up and it's going to fuel the production of new leaves. And so this is what is referred to as the sap. And the sap rises. And so in the spring, humans sometimes take advantage of that by putting a tap in your maple tree and getting some of that sweetness out, right? In the terms of maple syrup. And you can boil it down and you can get rid of some of the water and concentrate the sugars in the maple syrup. And so these are just examples of how both um, animals and plants can store energy.